Hello comic book guys and gals and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. This fellow is your host, Bill Miller. Ooh, I'm very excited because we are doing another five under the radar, undervalued speculation comic books. These are all books that you can get ridiculously cheap right now. And I think that they have a chance to really pop in the not too distant future. Now, these are all books that I own from my personal collection. I am not selling any of them. I don't have an ulterior motive. I just think it's fun to speculate on them. And if you can pick up one of these for dirt cheap and it hits later on, how wonderful is that? It's kind of the way I look at it. So let's go through and share these together. Five under the radar, undervalued spec books. First we have, beg my language, the goddamned number one. This is from 2015 and it's a five issue series. It's about Cain, the son of Adam and Eve, 1600 years after they were kicked out of Eden, Cain is looking for a way to die, but he can't in a dark, violent world. And it's definitely a gritty, depressing, but fantastic read. It's written by Jason Aaron, who wrote Wolverine, Thor, Punisher Max, his Thor storyline with Jane Foster is the basis for the new Thor Love and Thunder movie. And he also wrote Scout, which is a wonderful indie read as well. So he's an incredible writer. And I think that there's a great opportunity for someone to pick this up as either a movie or a TV show, probably more a movie, but either one. And indies are definitely good bets because there are a lot of them and there are a lot of streaming services that aren't Marvel or DC that are looking for ready-made content that they can easily turn into a movie or a TV show. And oftentimes they don't have to pay a whole lot of money because these are creator-owned and they're only dealing with one or a handful of people versus dealing with uh, big corporations. So a lot of advantages to dealing with creators and their creator owned properties. Now, generally with Indies, the important creator is the writer because that's, what's going to be translated to another medium. And usually it's the number one issue that will get the attention and that will rise in value if something gets optioned or if it comes to fruition and gets made into a television series, a movie, a cartoon, something like that. So the goddamned, pardon my French, number one. It's another one and that's the A cover. And this one is the B cover. All right, for our second book, one of my favorite reads. This is Fatal, number one. This is from 2012. And it's a 24 issue series. Oh, and did I mention I think I did mention two to three dollars all day long. So Fatal number one. It's a gritty noir uh, series as you'll usually get from the creative team of Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. That's who does this. It's about a modern day reporter who follows a lead involving a demon monster 
who is a mobster, and he has been chasing a woman since 1935, and it kind of jumps throughout history. It's amazing. Um, Brew Baker is definitely in his element when he's writing criminal noir series, and that's generally the his wheelhouse that he stays in, and for good reason. So he signed a deal, Ed Brubaker, with Legendary Television Studios to develop his creator-owned properties. And this would be a prime candidate for a television show. This one's a bit more. For a near-mint copy, you're looking at between $8 and $15. If you can find it cheaper, snap it up. But with many of these... And that's the A cover. Here's the B cover. With many of these, you can get them for less than the price of a modern comic book. So there's very little risk. And if it hits later, even if it goes up four or five times, you turned a three or four dollar comic book into a twenty dollar comic book. And if it doesn't go up, at the very least, I think you got a pretty good read. This is the D cover. That's Fatal number one, about eight to fifteen dollars, at least for the A cover. Next, we have a superhero property, or at least a Marvel property, and this is Skull the Slayer, number one. This is from 1975. There were eight issues in this run. This particular cover is by Gil Kane, and the series was written by Marv Wolfman. It's about a Vietnam POW who returns home to find that his wife has divorced him and she's in the arms of another man. His parents are dead. And his little brothers become a junkie. So his little brother attacks him. And in defending himself, he ends up killing his brother and he goes on the lam. He's caught in Bermuda by the authorities. But he gets sucked into a portal involved with the Bermuda Triangle. And this is a series that at some point will be on my live stream show, the retrospective that I do with Metarog. Because it's a really, really good read. So I just think that if the Conan and Red Sonia series take off, you may see Marvel looking for other related properties to spin into TV shows or movies. And Skull the Slayer might be one of those that they took a look at. It's similar in genre. Sort of sword and sorcery slash primitive type character and story. And even if they don't look at something else in that genre to turn into a TV show or a movie... It may, get a pri it may get a price bump because of a genre association with those two. So either way, I think it's a pretty safe and good bet to take. It's a small risk gamble, especially when you can get a high grade copy for between $8 and $20. High grade copy, $8 and $20. So that's Skull the Slayer, number one. All right, for our next one, we have Outer Darkness Chew, number one. This is from 2020. Three issues. This features crossover stories with Tony Chu and Joshua Rigg. This is an Afu Chan cover. Joshua Rigg from Outer Darkness, Tony Chu from Chu. This is the A cover, and it's written by John Lehman. 
And so really, this one has a possibility of seeing a rise in value if either Chu or Outer Darkness get optioned and made into a TV show. Chu would probably be closer. I know it's been optioned before. Um, and I suspect it will get optioned again. It's a very good story. And when it does, I see a high tide lifting all boats scenario with this particular series. So that's the A cover. This is the B cover. So that is Outer Darkness Chew number one. And last but certainly not least, we have Sonata number one. This is from 2019. It's a 12 issue series. Oh, before we go on, $2 to $4 for the Outer Darkness Chew number one. $2 to $4. Very affordable. And this one is $3 to $5. Again, for the price of a modern comic book or less, you can pick this up. $3 to $5 all day long. This is written by David Hine and Brian Haverlin. And the art and cover is by Brian Haverlin. It's a sci-fi series about a peaceful race and a warring race that clash on a planet that they each want to settle on. The planet already has sleeping giants there that may be gods. And this story follows a young woman's journey and adventure during that turmoil. It's definitely got steampunk vibes, which is cool. I enjoy steampunk, diesel punk. Haberlin is the co-creator of Witchblade. And this is a very good read, and it's gotten very good critical and popular reception. So I could easily see this being made into a television show or a movie. So that's Sonata number one. So we've got... That's the A cover. This is the B cover for that. Again, $3 to $5. So those are our spec picks. Sonata, number one. Outer Darkness, Chew, number one. Skull, the Slayer, number one. Fatal, number one. And the G Deed, oh, number one. And that will do it for our speculation comic books that we have for today. I hope you enjoyed hearing about them because I certainly enjoyed showing them to you. And if you did, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you're alerted as soon as I release new videos. Thumbs up and comments are always appreciated. And remember, we're taking over the world one comic book at a time.